There's not going to be any bumping up the keyboard today, dude. I'm going to have to take this away from you temporarily so you don't mess anything up. Just going to take it and uh, put it over here in this box where you can't get it. Mm. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the latest update. Right now, we're going to be doing another part four for MAME 2003, full speed ahead. Let's load up some classic arcade games. Uh, how about some of the very first ones I've ever played in the arcade? And Chuck E. Cheese way, way back. How about uh, Space Invaders for starters? Great, great title classic shmup, without a doubt. Let's see how well it holds up after all this time. 1978, Space Invaders. And unfortunately, I had to take the keyboard away from the cat temporarily just so he doesn't cause any hijinks today. But let's check this game out. 1978, as I mentioned. This is also one of the very first games that I got on my Atari 2600 way, way back. Very nifty shmup game. One of the forerunners of all shmups. And they've had dozens of these, uh, as far as other Space Invader games since then. Not too bad. Holds up pretty well. Uh, let's see what else we have to play with here. I'm going to think of some other games that I remember playing in the arcade. I remember uh, the game Combat and Gunfight on the original Atari 2600, but they had an arcade game which was quite a bit like it, called Boot Hill. Let's see how that holds up well. 1977. And when I had my Atari 2600, it actually wasn't called the Atari 2600. It was called the Sears Telegames. And it came with the game called Target Fun. And this is a game that I remember playing quite a bit on the original Atari 2600. Great, great two-player mode activate game way back then. Okay, let's see what else we have. And of course, uh, when I used to go to the bowling alley, I used to absolutely love playing the game Disc of Tron. And I love the mirrored look that it had. I mean, you can see this great, great backdrop. I'm going to try it out right now. 1983 Disc of Tron. And hopefully the cat's not going to cause any trouble today. I'm just trying to get a nice video recorded before I go to work. With no problems from the keyboard being bumped, uh, so to speak. Okay. And I always love all the Tron games, including of the Intellivision uh, Disc of Tron game as well. Which uh, more recently had a great update so you could actually use the right analog for the directionals of the uh, keypad that you'd normally have to... You'll see what I mean. I'll do it as a tangent thing here. Pretty cool game here. Digging it. Uh, okay. Took him out. Let's see what else we have here. I remember this uh, submarine attack game that I used to play way, way back as well called Destroyer. Let's see what that's about. All right, next to it. 1977 Destroyer. And they had uh, big limitations as far as uh, what they could work with back then, but they made it definitely work for, you know, considering the time frame. Okay. Very, very interesting. Classic here. And again, these are the type of games that are always fun to see who can get the higher score between your friends, loved one, family member, etc. But uh, since I'm off on a little bit of a tangent here, I'm going to do the Intellivision uh, version of Discotron real quick to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to load that into uh, Intellivision core right now. Mattel Intellivision Free INTV, which Mark W. Kidd and uh, Recompile Org worked on before. Low content Star Trek, you dummy. I'll do my Intellivision folder. And I'll go to the Disc of Tron game. Which would be Tron Deadly Disc, if I remember correctly. Okay. And again, this was difficult to play because it had a keypad, but they did an update so you could use the right analog and it makes it so much easier to manage. And these are the controls right here. And I get to push the select button to swap between the left and right controllers. Remember that if you have any trouble starting the game. Okay. See, I can move with my left analog and then I can shoot with the right analog. That is so nice. Now, I love the Atari 2600 version of this as well, but yes, this is a beautiful thing. Because normally I would have to pull the L1 button and select between the directions on there. But having the right analog makes it so much better. It's a very, very cool game, digging it. In television, fantastic core, free INTV. 
Okay, uh, what else do we have to play today? What else is old school arcade wise? It seems like my cat is uh, making some noise downstairs. Hopefully he's not getting into any trouble. What just happened? Really, dude? I took the keyboard away from me. How is this even possible? Be right back, guys and gals. Okay, so we seem to have a problem here. I hid the keyboard so the cat can no longer bump it, but he has apparently found Thanos' uh, Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> Let's really hope he doesn't get into any hijinks with this thing. Oh, great. You don't have posable thumbs. You're not going to be able to snap your fingers with this thing, dude. I would definitely do some cooler stuff than uh, causing C8 errors on other people's mini classics. But uh, I'm going to make sure my uh, system isn't messed up. I'm going to try some of the games that I just played. Uh, let's try out uh, these in the same order I played them. How about uh, Space Invaders again? Okay. And hopefully he didn't uh, really make anything go wrong here. Whoa, what the hell? This is definitely different. I'm gonna go with it. So apparently the cat liked the treats and uh, the Infinity Gauntlet worked out for the better in this case. Definitely digging it. Much more authentic to the true home arcade experience. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now I'm trying to think of which game I loaded after this. I will do a few more. Why not? Okay. That's holding up quite well. I remember being able to play this, uh, the Atari 2600 version for like two or three hours straight. You could definitely get quite a bit farther in the Atari 2600 versions of games such as Missile Command and Space Invaders versus the arcade versions. I mean, the arcade version of Missile Command is tremendously difficult. Oh, uh, let's try out that Boot Hill game again. Why not? Okay, let's see what's going on here. Whoa, this is definitely cool. Yeah, like I said, they had uh, limitations to what they could do back then, so they did a few creative and inventive things to make games stand out amongst the competition, and here they have a cool background, and it definitely makes the game a lot cooler and uh, more immersive than simply the graphics that you saw a few minutes ago before the cat got a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet. And speaking of westerns, on Netflix they have this very, very nifty movie by the Coen brothers called the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I would highly recommend watching at least the first segment of it. If you ever wondered what a mashup of a uh, character similar to Pee Wee Herman and, of course, uh, John Wick and Kill Bill would be like, watch the very first of the segments of the Buster Scruggs and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Very, very uh, surprisingly cool. Uh, but Bill, uh, Boot Hill played out pretty well. well let's check out uh, Disc of Tron and Destroyer. Let's see what we have going on there. And like I said, this was a very, very cool game when I used to play it in a bowling alley many years ago. Pool, bowling, and Disc of Tron were my go-to fortes that, back then. And again, this is another one of the games that was fixed mirror-wise uh, more recently, so very, very cool. Proper controls, proper mirror But uh, so far the games are working good, but for the better. As the Kool-Aid man would say, oh yeah! And I always love uh, when they had a little bit of a Family Guy uh, incident where they had the Kool-Aid uh, guy coming through the other side. It's like, it's always different from the other side. I used to watch a lot of Family Guy, American Dad, and of course, uh, Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken was absolutely hilarious, especially when they did stuff uh, such as Transformers. I love that stuff. But very, very cool. This is so much more like the uh, authentic experience. And speaking of uh, Bumblebee, I watched uh, Bumblebee, and it was a very, very interesting movie. Not bloated like some of the other Transformers movies, even though I did enjoy all of the Transformers movies. I'm a big, big fan. I especially liked the last Transformers movie uh, before Bumblebee, the uh, night one, because they went back into the medieval times. And I like when the original Transformers had a medieval episode. And then, of course, they even had an episode of the Super Friends, where Superman uh, basically had amnesia, 
went back in time and did that kind of uh, King Arthur and Connecticut court style thing where he was uh, basically going back in time, just like in the Transformers episode. And also, speaking of Transformers, I always uh, got a kick out of the episode when they had uh, the Transformers turned into humans, and especially the mashups between G.I. Joe and Transformers crossovers. We definitely need to have G.I. Joe and Transformers in the same movie and or context. Oh, this is very, very cold here. We have uh, not only backdrops, but we have a nice colorization going on here. Very, very awesome. Definitely makes it look a lot more cooler than uh, when I showed you a few minutes ago. So we're going to try this for a quick moment. So we can move up the uh, target here and then push the button. A little bit like target fun, just uh, doing death torpedoes and such. Okay, we got a few more games to test today. Let's see if he mess with any of my other games. Not bad for a game from the 1970s. This really looks awesome. And some of the Game & Watch games had a similar technology where they could use uh, various uh, colorizations and refractory uh, techniques and uh, just pure science to make them look a lot better than they were before. I mean, uh, I showed these in my Game & Watch video. I might have it on here where I can actually show you what I'm talking about. I'll see if I can go into retro settings and give you an example of one of these more advanced games that were ahead of their time. And just like with Space Invaders, Boot Hill, Destroyer, and many more, they use some truly ahead of their time, cutting edge, creativity, solutions, workarounds, and gimmicks in order to transcend the constraints of the hardware limitations of the time frame we are talking about. I'm going to go to low core. I'm going to load this incredibly awesome Game & Watch core, which I've showcased in a few videos before. And we'll load this game that used a very, very cool gimmick, as you'll see in a moment here. I'm going to my dummy folder uh, method. Now load the Game & Watch folder. We'll load this game called Galaxy 2 by Epic. And a lot of things that would be able to pull this off way back then would have actually uh, drained the batteries and they would have died very, very fast, like within mere minutes. But they used the sun and very, very cool reflective uh, technology in order to be able to pull this off. You can uh, see some of the more specifics of this if you watch my Game & Watch video. I'm using the select button to switch between the console controls here. I'm going to power it on, start the game, okay, okay, here we go, and yes, they use uh, very, very cool reflections in order to achieve the results that you're basically seeing on the screen on the real handheld unit many, many years ago, late 70s, early 80s, this is way, way ahead of its time. And the cool thing about this, if you like games like Galaga and Galaxian, there are actually several different waves and uh, formation types as you play throughout these uh, levels here. It's not just one same thing, it's very, very creative. We're going to move back to May 2003 in a moment here though, but definitely digging this game. Very, very cool for a handheld game, and I had uh, many, many handheld games back then, and uh, there are quite a few that you can play with that. But let's move on to some more arcade games. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have the great, uh, 1943, the Battle of Midway. Love these Capcom arcade shmup classics. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. Okay, we got a nifty border, loving it. And one thing I love to do when we have Clovercon installed, which happens, uh, by default with Ashy, we could, uh, use Turbo Fire. Nothing makes shmups more fun than having Turbo Fire. Just like with Final Fight, where I was uh, doing the showcase of the uh, 16 times per second, which basically breaks the AI in the game. Watch what happens if I hold down the attack button here and push the select button. I have nifty turbo fire. This is awesome. I love turbo firing games. Imagine how different things would have been way back in the day if you were able to use turbo fire in games like this in the arcade. Of course, I used uh, the NES Advantage, and I was able to play uh, many, many games using Turbo Fire and Slow Motion, such as Gradius, Adventures of BioBilly, and so on. It definitely helped me beat a lot of games that I probably would have otherwise had to work a lot harder and more difficult to be able to take on. But definitely digging this border here, and Turbo Fire is incredibly cool. Turbo Fire Activate! Well, uh, we got a few more games to showcase here, but definitely dig all these games. You know, 1994, 
1940, 1941, 1942, 3, 4, Kai, all that good stuff. And even a 1942 remake on PlayStation 3. Which I'll have to showcase in another video. But I'm gonna disable my turbo fire by holding down the attack button and pushing to like to it's disabled. I'm gonna exit back to the main user interface and we're gonna try some more games out. There's another 80 show that I used to watch. It also had a video game for it on the original Nintendo as well as the arcade called Airwolf. Very, very cool and a the, uh, theme that you could never tire of. I believe the same guy behind uh, this show, I think it was Glenn Larson, was also behind shows such as uh, Manimal, Auto Man, and multiple other great shows. Uh, let's check out uh, Airwolf, also a nifty cool border here. That theme is priceless. Now I'm going to do the Turbo Fire Activate here and see what happens. Quite a bit like the Nintendo version. But I discovered a very, very cool glitch with the game if you use Turbo Fire. Watch what happens there. You can do Turbo uh, Fire for this. You can also do it for the bombs. Missiles, should I say. And if you push both buttons together, you do a little somersault. But watch what happens if I do Turbo on both of these buttons. Okay? I am absolutely invincible now. I can just fire at enemies at will and pretty much get to the entire game without even being taken out. Because the Turbo Fire pretty much breaks the AI of the game. Look at this. This is awesome. <laughs> kind of like I did that glitch in the, uh, the Boogie Wings game uh, in my last video. This is very funny. Very, very cool game, though. Ding shmups all the way. And I definitely want to go back and watch uh, the Airwolf show again, as well as the other movie that's very similar to it, Blue Thunder. With Roy Schneider, I love the uh, high-tech powered vehicles that they used to have way back then. Again, that motorcycle show with it called Street Hawk was another great one. But how funny is this? I can literally just uh, take down the buttons on my controller, walk away, and probably beat the entire game. I haven't tested this fully, but as I'm seeing right now, nothing's touched me. I'm completely unscathed. But I'm gonna disable the turbo fire right now. Okay. And there we go, I'm done. <laughs> Just like that. Let me disable the grenade fire as well. Okay. Now I'm going to exit back to the main user interface and let's try a few more games out and see what other incredibly cool Borders the Infinity Gauntlet has made happen today. And this will go into the next update, by the way. Uh, what else do we have to play? We have uh, Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom, one of the very first games I ever played on my ColecoVision uh, Atom computer combo, should I say. I had a nice nifty attachment where I was able to connect to ColecoVision. Right there, there's a nice LED display, which is uh, not present in the normal version. That is a very cool awesomeness there. This is also another game that requires samples as well. Otherwise, you will have no sound whatsoever. A very, very cool shmup. And I used to play this on a cassette tape on my Atom computer. And again, I asked for a Commodore 64, and I got uh, an Atom computer made by Coleco instead, and I also got the ColecoVision attachment, which plays ColecoVision games as well as the Atari 2600 games. I had a lot of fun with the Atom computer. I did some stuff such as uh, actually swapping out the lunch school menus. I made complete representations of them using my computer uh, printer that came with the Atom computer, and I was able to swap them at school, and they never even figured out it was me that did it. They were actually handed out fake menus for a few times before they realized I swapped them out. I made them look very, very realistically like the original ones. Uh, what else do we have to play here? Uh, uh, Donkey Kong. Why not? Donkey Kong is a classic game. And I played that in the last video as well. Okay, let's see what this is all about. Very, very cool. Got a nice border on this one too. And this is another game you're going to need samples on. Otherwise, you're not going to hear Donkey Kong jumping right there. Or the Mario uh, running animation noise. And again, I am a big fan of the Game Boy Donkey Kong game, as I cannot say enough, because you could uh, pretty much do the first stage, and then it moves on to an entirely different game. More of a platformer with multi-tiered levels. Very, very cool stuff. See if I have enough to take Donkey Kong out. I sucked at the Donkey Kong Jumpman Returns game really bad. Oh, well, I suck at this game. Let's move on to some more awesomeness here. I'm going to play some games that are more uh, current and mainstream. 
I'm going to play the very first game that I ever emulated on a computer, on my Windows 98 computer, way, way back in the 1990s. Uh, we're talking about this great game called Sly Spy, made by Data East. Ever notice something that you'd realize many years later? Like, just look at Iron Sword, the Wizards and Warriors game. I didn't know who the hell Fabio was when I was younger. That he was on romance novel covers and all that jazz, but I definitely knew who he was when I replayed the game many years later. But the cover art for this great game actually looks quite a bit like, uh, more than a passing resemblance to Timothy Dalton, who happened to do James Bond movies at the time. But, uh, welcome to the very first game I ever played on the main emulator. Sly Spy, and I also additionally played uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Welcome. Great, great game, and uh, hey Chuck, I don't think we're going to be able to have that uh, James Bond license. Okay, what are we going to do about it? Oh, we're just going to put a thing in, so people could input their own codes, and they could be 007, or they could be Agent 99 from Get Smart, and so on. But great, great game, and I'm a big fan of uh, skydiving in general. Any game that has any kind of uh, skydiving scene in it, I'm definitely a fan of, and I got a huge kick out of playing this for the first time and just doing this entire air uh, combat sequence mid-air. Very, very cool stuff here. If you like games like Rolling Thunder, you'll be right at home with this game. And there's a local pizza shop that happened to have this and I dumped uh, about five dollars and quarters into this game to beat it in its entirety from begin to end. And look at the top right, it even says Golden Gun. That's another James Bond reference. So yes, this is, as far as I'm concerned, a James Bond game without the license. Very, very cool stuff. Oh, look, unlike Narc, you can actually kill the dogs in this game. They don't turn into puppies and run away. A very, very fun game. I remember there being a really, really uh, cool vehicular uh, stage after this, too. Let's see if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I last played this. Oh, yeah, I remember this. As you notice, there's uh, glitches in this game occasionally. It's just uh, comes with the territory with some games. And this is one of those games that if you actually do a suspense state with it and come back to it, you can have complete missing backgrounds, all kinds of goofy stuff. It becomes very hilarious, in fact. But very, very cool game. Absolutely love it. And we're going to move on to some more games here. What else do we have? And I'm thinking of uh, that really, really cool gimmick with the Game & Watch emulator. There's another system that had a really cool gimmick as well, but it didn't really do well at the time. I'm talking about the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Uh, let's load up one of those games real quick. And again, I'm running uh, a good 150 games plus right now. I would never recommend doing this. Uh, why did they make a Waterworld game on the Virtual Boy? They could have done better than this. I mean, not suffice to say, I actually did enjoy the Waterworld movie with uh, Kevin Costner. And I liked all of his epic movies at the time, including Postman, I watched Dances with Wolves, Robin Hood, and so on. But right here is a game called Vertical Force, which was incredibly cool, ahead of its time, but it's not really a known uh, property or license. So as a result, it didn't do as well. But it has a really cool gimmick. I showcased this in one of my Shmup Strabo Gansen videos, where you're able to have two different altitudes, which is really, really cool. And this is nice because this doesn't really uh, hurt your eyes like a, a real Virtual Boy would. And look, Hudson Soft. Great, great, great. These games are actually pretty endearing and hold up well. I mean, there are quite a few great Virtual Boy games. Look at it. You tap a button and uh, change between planes. That is awesome. That is very, very cool. You know what a really made the Virtual Boy cool? I'll show you after I do this little demonstration here. But I'm absolutely digging this, and this is one of my favorite go-to shmups to play on the Virtual Boy. Or shmups in general for that matter. Great soundtrack, great visuals, and I absolutely am digging the 3D uh, planes here. Look, I'll go lower and avoid that fire. I'll go higher and avoid that fire. That is cool as hell. But yeah, definitely check out uh, this game. Very, very cool. Vertical Force for the Virtual Boy. No bios required. And I'm going to move on to what I think would have really, really helped the Virtual Boy become a more hotter commodity. They should have done something uh, going in tune with the uh, Avengers that I'm doing right now. They should have had Captain America and the Avengers on their Virtual Boy. And I envision it, it might be a little bit like this if they would have had it on the Virtual Boy. 
And speaking of vision, they have a uh, vision in the game, if I remember correctly. There we go. How about Captain American Avengers, uh, Virtual Boy style? Let's see how this plays out. I'll play as, uh, Captain America. Why not? And they've made countless versions of Captain America games. The Nintendo version, Super Nintendo version, all kinds of funny stuff. But yes, it's a type of, uh, should we say, uh, shader type style thing here for a Virtual Boy style thing. Very, very funny stuff here. If they would have had something like this on a Virtual Boy, it definitely would have done a lot better. Really upbeat soundtrack. This is definitely one of the other games that was fun to play in the 1990s, uh, along with TMNT, Simpsons, and so on. Great uh, two-player mode activate game here. Okay, and I love the border as well. We're going to move on to some more games in a moment here, but this is very, very cool. Looking like a Virtual Boy game, and yes, this would have definitely helped the system sell a bit more. Not Waterworld. And there were actually uh, quite a few Japanese games that were pretty fun to play as well. But let's move on to something else here. Uh, we're going to move on to one of the earlier arcade fighting games. I'm a big fan of fighting games as well, and there's one that... Helped originate the uh, legacy, and I'm going to play that right now. We're going to do this great game called Karate Champ from 1984. And there's going to be another thing you're going to be able to do with the uh, update. Something that was broken before, but Grant2258 helped fix it up, and it works better now. And of course, Karate Champ was made by the invariably awesome Data East, who also made great classics such as RoboCop, Bad Dudes, Cardinal, and of course, Slice Pie of which I showcased a couple minutes ago, and this essentially kicked out the entire one-on-one -on -one fighting game genre phenomenon that we all know about nowadays. It had an incredibly cool gimmick in which you could utilize two joysticks to pull off a multitude of moves. Very, very cool stuff. I wasn't the best at playing this in the arcade, but once I got it at home on the Nintendo Entertainment System, I definitely got it quite a bit better. But let's see if we can pull this off and do a little bit of a retheme. Karate Kid style, you're the best, oh yeah, Daniel LaRusso. And yes, I'm a big fan of the Karate Kid series that showcased on YouTube uh, earlier in the year. I'm really looking forward to Season 2, which is inevitably coming in the near future. Uh, let's see if we can do a sweep or a crane uh, style kick here. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah! You're the best? Oh yeah! And let's address the elephant in the room. What the hey is Ron Jeremy doing in the background right now? Oh, great. I went low while he went high. That didn't work out too well for me. Third time's a charm. Great. Oh, we're going to try it one more time. I got to at least finish this round here. There we go, one inch punch. This is a great two player mode activate game for sure. I'm still, uh, it's hard to take my eyes off Ron Jeremy in the background, kind of like having uh, Snoop Dogg and of course the Tekken game. Oh great, red one. Red's always uh, the bad one to have, especially in the Star Trek series. We all know that the non-regulars who have the red shirts always get screwed in the continuity of the show. But we're going to move on to another classic arcade game. And uh, we're going to be playing, uh, how about Jungle King? Which I know as a uh, jungle hunt in the United States. I mean, they changed it because it has uh, too much familiarity with, of course, Tarzan, the king of the jungle. A.K.A. the Jungle King. And where we have Sly Spy being a James Bond game without the license, I believe this is very much so, obviously, a Tarzan game without it being a licensed Tarzan game. Jungle King in other countries, but known as Jungle Hunt in the United States. And this is also one of the last games I got at full price on the Atari 2600, along with Moon Patrol. But listen to the introduction here. Tarzan Roar, anyone? But yes, this game, along with a Moon Patrol, were roughly 50 US dollars uh, when I got them for my birthday in 1982. But in 1983, we had that video game crash in pretty much every game. Went down to 99 cents. 
and went into bargain bins. I mean, as a kid, I was like, awesome, I could get all these Atari games, and I had like 80-something Atari games, but I didn't realize that until many years later, when I got more into the history of Atari in general, that it was really a bad thing for the entire video game industry as a whole. And companies like Electronic Arts, which uh, pretty much stayed on PC at the time, did really well with uh, Jordan First Bird and such. And uh, here we go. And of course, uh, Nintendo was pretty much the company that revived the entire industry with the Nintendo Entertainment System, ironically enough. Great, great game here. I love the variety of gameplay. And again, this along with Moon Patrol are two of the very best games you could ever conceivably play on the Atari 2600, let alone in the arcade. Definitely check out both versions. Now, speaking of other games that like Moon Patrol, Moon Patrol is made by Irem. I mean, many of you might not even be aware of that fact, but we're going to move on to some more stuff here. We're going to play an Irem game. How about one of my favorite Irem games of all, In the Hunt, which never ever gets out. It is such an incredible shmup, and there are simply not enough underwater shmups. In the Hunt, here we go. Irem, 1993. And as far as I'm concerned, there are simply not enough games that involve underwater exploration and or combat. I mean, I would love to see more of these. I have quite a few uh, obscure games related to this. I mean, we all have our Echo the Dolphin and Echo Defender of the Future on Dreamcast, but I have a lot of other obscure games, which I'm most certainly going to be showcasing in future videos. But right now, we are playing In the Hunt, made by Irem, and some of the development members went on to make the formidable Metal Slug 1 and so on. But let's check this out. And again, this is a game that used to have uh, sound encryption issues, but they are now completely fixed on MAME 2003 Extreme, Standard, and Plus. This is incredibly awesome. And uh, with the border even cooler than ever before. This is also one of the games that I used to have on PlayStation 1 with the big uh, rectangular case. And I actually uh, kind of wish I would have stuck with that case format because once they got to the uh, smaller, slimmer jewel cases, it wasn't as cool as a gimmick as far as I'm concerned. I love the big rectangular cases and I would have loved to see them stick with that format the entire time. I believe even uh, Sega Saturn even stuck with the bigger cases for the full time as far as I remember. Uh, let's see if we can do some cheats right now since uh, I'm going to show you how to do cheats again. I'm going to go into the uh, core options. Options, uh, main menu on. Resume, cheats, enable cheats, and look at all this. Invincibility on player one. And I'm going to re uh, return. Go back to the uh, quick menu options and turn the menu off. Look at that, I'm invincible! And let's add turbo fire as well. There we go. <laughs> but I would never normally play this game this way, I'm just showing you how cheats work. But that is very, very cool. If you want to get a little bit of practice. And then of course I can disable it the same way. Options. Main menu on. Cheats. And just toggle it off. And you can look at it, there's a lot of other cool things too. Wave Torpedo. Okay. And then I'll resume. Okay, let's uh, resume the game. Main menu off. And I have a better torpedo there. Look at that awesomeness. The very, very cool stuff. We're going to move on to a couple more games before we close up shop for today. And speaking of the Metal Slug Legacy, which happened on the very elite console, the Neo Geo, we also have an earlier effort from SNK called Akari Warriors. And I'm a big fan of Akari Warriors, and I most certainly played my fair share of both Akari Warriors and Bubble Bobble on the original Nintendo Entertainment System with a friend growing up. We played them pretty much after we got out of school, particularly on weekends. We beat them both a ton of times, but uh, he moved on to greater things, moved over to Arizona to stay with his uncle, got into the stunt bike hobby, and uh, opportunity knocked, and he was able to uh, do some shoe commercials wherein he would drive on the freeway and drag the shoes on the surface top of the concrete and pretty much emphasize the durability of said shoes. And uh, he also moved on to be able uh, to be the stunt double for Jason Statham in both Crank 1 and 2. Good stuff there. And I'm going to have to try to pull up some of his uh, commercials 
and put them in the release notes because their commercials were absolutely funny to behold. But this game seems to be a lot faster than the Nintendo version that I remember playing way, way back. And uh, this is also a rotary control game, so unless you uh, go to the controls and reconfigure it, you're going to be able to only shoot up, and that's it. But very, very fast. And I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go into uh, quick menu options. I'm going to enable the main menu, which I did earlier for In the Hunt. And uh, I'm going to uh, resume. And I can go into game history, which you're going to be able to install an HMOD for within the next core set update. You can already do this with MAME 2003 Extreme as well as uh, MAME 2003 Standard, but you're going to be able to do it with Plus as well in the next update. But right here, Akari Warriors 1986 SNK. SNK's answer to Capcom's Commando, released a year earlier. One or two players take on the role of a Rambo-esque soldier as they fight on land and water to reach the village of Akari. Very, very cool stuff. And if you scroll down, typically you'd have technical details, trivia, tips and tricks, uh, series, ports, and so on. Very, very cool stuff here. I'm going to go back uh, to the main menu here and do cheats. I'm going to enable a couple cheats real quick. Infinity lives, ammo, and grenades. And then I'm going to resume. And then, of course, I'm going to have to go back into the options here and uh, toggle off the main menu. But now we have infinity uh, lives here. So I can keep dying and reviving. Highlander style. But we're going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here and see what the uh, Nintendo version is like in comparison to this. I remember using either ABBA or BAAB to continue over and over again. Let's take this guy out. He's getting a little annoying there. And I do love the uh, angry video game nerd take on, of course, uh, Akari Warriors. That was very, very funny. Definitely check that out. And I lost both my tanks, obviously. But we're going to load up the Nintendo version here and see what that's like in comparison to this and see if it really holds up well speed wise. So Star Directory dummy, I'll load my Nintendo games here. And I'm kinda disappointed I didn't get to try out the tank. I would love being in the tank for a moment, but uh I guess we'll do it in the Nintendo version here. And I'm gonna load it up with the F C E U M M core which I use the most. I use that in Nystopia. You'll see in a moment here. And I love all Akari Warriors 1, 2 and 3, all great games. They are rotary control games, so keep that in mind. We're going to load up uh, FCU and then right now. I remember just taking a good 45 minutes to an hour to beat way, way back. Yes, it definitely seems to be a tad slower than the arcade version, but let's see. There's also another, uh, another Akari Warriors game, which I'm a big, big fan of, but I really wish it could run faster, full speed ahead on the mini, but as of right now, it cannot. But let's get to one of these tanks real quick. Yes, there's definitely a noticeable difference, and it's very, very funny when you play games such as uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and Strider on Sega Genesis, a.k.a. Mega Drive, and then you play the arcade version, they're very, very uncannily similar to one another. Then you play games like Robocop, Bad Dudes, and then you play the Nintendo version and the arcade version, they are tremendously different, like they're not even remotely the same game. It's almost a spectacle to behold and laugh at. But I'm going to definitely have to showcase some of these uh, differences in another video. Yes, it very much feels like you're playing this Rambo in this game. And why am I in a pink tank and uh, taking on pink enemies versus the red enemies in the arcade version? That's very, very uh, odd. But I'm going to load up the other Akari Warriors game, which I find incredibly awesome, but unfortunately it doesn't run full speed ahead. But I'm going to go to low content style directory. Dummy, it's an open board game, which I'm going to be running via the uh, PPSSPP Extreme Core. Akari Warriors, a fan-made game off of the Beats of Rage Legacy. And uh, we'll check this out for a moment. It actually fits right in the context of my Horse Travaganza series because this is an incredibly violent game. And I'm definitely hoping we can get it running full speed ahead on the Mini. But I'm going to pause this for a moment until I get to the game because it takes uh, a little bit over a minute and a half to get in-game. So I'm going to pause it. Be right back, guys and gals. Winners don't use drugs. I always love seeing that message in these games. Great homage to the legacy of the 1980s and 90s arcade games. But uh, I'm going to pause it for a quick moment and we're going to get into the game. And as mentioned, unfortunately this game does not run too fast. But it is incredibly violent and ultra cool. And uh, hopefully like Drastic we'll be able to get this run at full speed ahead on the mini. But uh, you'll see a little bit of this insaneness right now. Just think of uh, like a bullet time effect. Watch what happens when I shoot this gun off. 
Look how ultra-violent that is. No shortage of violence in this game. This is one of the more fun open board games that I've played. And of course you can play this on your PC at full speed ahead. Definitely worth checking out. But we have a few more games we're going to have to definitely showcase within the context of this main 2003 plus showcase video. But uh, definitely dig in the Akari Warriors open board game. So we're going to exit back to the main user interface and try out a few more games. And again with the PPSS PP Extreme, you no longer have to worry about using the 2048 core low core to be able to quit uh, faster. You can quit very fast with the extreme version of it. Oh, uh, we're going to move on to some more awesomeness. We're going to do another shmup. How about Gyrus? Big, big fan of Gyrus. I believe Konami is behind this one. And I also like the Nintendo version. Very, very cool border going on there. Definitely digging this. Yep, Konami. We're going to have to do a couple uh, Konami shmups. Great, great game. Right up there with the likes of Galaga and Galaxian as far as awesome shmup the dude. But digging the border without a doubt. Pretty amped up pump soundtrack going on here too. I have another uh, shmup in mind that I'm going to have to check out next. Why not? We're going to move back to the main user interface and uh, try out another, uh, I believe it was made by Konami, called uh, Scramble. And I remember having this in an arcade collection that they did. I think it was on PlayStation 1. Pretty sure it came on that collection. But uh, we'll try out Scramble right now. I have an idea with this game. Uh, like I've done in a couple other videos, uh... Uh, demonstrations wise, I'm going to try to do Turbo Fire Mode Activate and see what happens. Yep, Konami 1981. So this is a two year difference between uh, Gyrus and this. Uh, let's see how this holds up. So I'm going to uh, enable Turbo Fire and see how it uh, plays here. Turbo Fire, and I have grenades as well. Oh yeah, look at this. Turbo Fire for both. I would have absolutely loved to have the ability to do turbo fire for many of these arcade games when they were originally out. That would have been funny. But this actually holds up incredibly well for turbo fire. I'm kind of wondering if you can use a river raid uh, turbo fire in that Atari 2600 game. That'd be pretty funny. I'm going to have to test the waters with that in the future. But yes, I have a feeling I'm going to make it uh, quite a bit farther using turbo fire mode activate here. Let's try to make it to the cavern area here. I'll try to uh, focus a little bit more. It's not bad for a 1981 game. Holds up extremely well. Not really a well-known game, but definitely a fun game. Like River Raid, where you have to get Fio to keep going. Now try to get to the cavern area. We should have a couple more games uh, to showcase in this video. But absolutely loving these borders. And again, this is going to go out in the next update. And I'll have release notes uh, concerning them. And they're going to be uh, probably 150 or so that you're going to be able to play with uh, to start with. And then I'll be able to add more. I could uh, do the script and add more. And if there are any games you want to see borders for, just let me know in the comments. And I'll try to add them when I get around to it. There are a good thousand plus to pull from as far as doing them. But very, very cool. And yes, this would be a lot more difficult if you weren't using Turbo Fire. I don't think I'll have any trouble beating a high score there. So I'm going to disable the Turbo Fire and go back to the main menu and try out a couple more games here. Okay. Now I'm going to exit back to the main user interface, and uh, what else do we have to play? Speaking of Bubble Bobble, there are actually two incredibly cool fan-made hacks that you can play on the main 2003 Plus update. Uh, let's see what we have here. I'm going to go over to Bubble Bobble. We have one called Lost Cave, which has additional levels that pretty much uh, go off of the original one. And then we have one called uh, Bubble Bobble Ultra, which is insanely difficult, as you'll see in a moment here. 
But if you're a Bubble Bobble fan, both of these are cool hacks to check out. And again, made by Taito. Same company that made Jungle King and, of course, uh, Rostin. But look at the map here. This is a lot more difficult. And uh, you have to actually navigate, uh, traverse your environment to a degree to be able to get into a, a little bit of a location where you can even get these enemies. This is a lot more difficult. So it definitely adds a nice uh, fun factor to it by increasing the difficulty. And this is only the first stage alone. See if I can even make it past the first stage here. <laughs> Look at this, this is a lot more difficult. And my time limit is almost over here. Let's see what the second stage looks like here. I always love that you can jump from the bottom of the screen to the top. Always cool. And I also like the other Bubble Bobble hack as well. They're both pretty cool games to check out if you like the original. So at least you got some options there. And there are a ton of hacks that may be uh, drawn from in future updates. I mean, if you know of any that might be worth adding, feel free to recommend them. And I'll look into them. And I'll correlate this information with the main uh, 2003 Plus team. And maybe we'll get them added. But Lost Cave is very cool too. Some nice Easter egg things that you might find in the game. Let's check this out. And I remember playing the original Bubble Bobble. It's been a while, but I remember there being some bonus stages. See, a lot easier than the last one I just played, Bubble Bobble Ultra. But I love that there are little uh, Easter egg things like uh, icons that show up in a game. Like, you have a little computer there, a Game Boy. That Game Boy was most certainly, I don't remember that being in the original Bubble Bobble arcade. But yes, yeah, so I've... Play Bubble Bobble 2 player mode activate with somebody, you might be thoroughly surprised. It's a great game to introduce kids to who have never really gotten into these uh, classic vintage arcade games. But uh, we're going to be playing another game right now. We're going to be talking about a cardinal rule thumb here. How about the number one rule Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. I mean, uh, no said. I'm going to be playing something here and we're not going to be talking about it. I'm just going to play it for a moment here. We're going to be playing, uh, I'm not even going to say the name, but just watch. I think uh, Thanos' uh, Infinity Gauntlet really wanted uh, out the wazoo on this one. But let's check this uh, puzzle game out. And here we go. This is a game that was never released for Sega. One of two games that I know of that were never released. And it's uh, very much a column-esque style game, puzzle game. I'm a big fan of puzzle games as well. Two of my favorite puzzle games of all time are obviously Tetris and uh, one that is arguably just as fun, if not better. I mean, I can never pick one over the other, but Luminous on the PSP. That is such an incredible game. And one of the very re uh, big reasons I even got a PSP to begin with was uh, one of my very good friends, the one that did the uh, Shadow of the Colossus uh, template uh, video in the last video I did. He uh, actually told me if I bought a PSP on the spot, he would uh, pick me up Luminous in one other game. And uh, of course, I took the plunge and I've never looked back. I'm a big, big fan of uh, the PSP to this day. Many, many great games on the PSP, but interesting game that was never released here. And we're not going to talk about it because number one rule of Fight Club is not to talk about Fight Club. But we're going to move on to some other fun stuff here. We got at least one or two other games that I'd like to showcase before the end of this video. I'm a big hack and slash game, and uh, we're going to be playing this other game that is a little bit like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Shadow or Mystery. How about the great game, Magic Sword Heroic Fantasy? And this is another game that I picked up on PlayStation 3, great Capcom arcade classic. Let's see how this fares with the borders here. Awesome. And even uh, going as far back as Nintendo, I, every time you heard of Nintendo, Capcom, and Konami, you can never uh, run into a bad game. I mean, pretty much every game that they played, I've thoroughly enjoyed. Very, very cool with the borders here. We definitely need more hack and slash games nowadays. And I know the latest God of War, which won Game of the Year, is less 
a uh, hack and flash and more like a story driven uh, Last of Us style game. But I'm not arguing it's bad whatsoever. It's definitely a unique experience. I still need to pick up the game. I've only briefly played it. But it's definitely on my to get list. To add to my incredible backlog of other games, I probably have uh, 30 to 40 percent of my games on my shelf are still sealed in your packages, but many of them I've actually gotten on uh, digitally when they've gone on sale and such after the fact of buying them initially. But definitely digging this. This is a great uh, two player mode activate game as well. And I like that you can play different characters in this game too. Kind of reminds me of a type of game that is very fitting of the Turbo Graphics 16. Something you'd see uh, in those great games, like Legendary Axe. This is very, very much like a Legendary Axe style game as far as I'm concerned. It, it even has an attack meter just like Legendary Axe at the bottom left. And then like Game of Thrones, we have dragons in the first stage alone. Let's take out this dragon and move on to some other cool games. We'll do another showcase of our custom OST for a brief moment here. But yes, uh, Magic Sword, incredible game while we're playing. If you love your hack and slash uh, fantasy games. We're going to do another custom OST for a brief moment here to see how it uh, parlays into the borders and such. Double Dragon. So we're going to have the custom OST along with the borders and see how this plays out. More of an authentic arcade experience and still to this day I'm pretty bad at getting past the bridge with the uh, troublesome jump. It's not like you can just push a jump button. You uh, literally, even in the home versions, you had to push the kick and punch button together to do the jump button. But very, very cool. Loving that it has the arcade border here. And let's see how this fares with the uh, custom OST. One of my favorite custom OSTs of them all. And this had some tremendous issues, such as slow down and the game crashing at the tail end. That is awesome. A vocal version of the theme song. Very, very cool here. Again, I'm still going to have to showcase the Bobble's uh, Little Adventure, Big Adventure, etc. Because that is such a great game that we cannot yet play on the mini. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to though. But again, I'm playing the custom OST with the update and the borders and such. And you'll be able to do both of these in the update. Uh, let's see what they have as far as history is concerned for this game. I'm going to go back into the options here. I'm going to have to start doing this with mini games. I'm going to go to main menu. Resume. Uh, let's go to game history here. And see what they say about this game for a quick moment. And uh. Very cool. It has the entire storyline here. Technical information. Trivia. Double Dragon may not have been the world's first scroll and beat em up. That accolade belongs to Technos Japan's own Renegade. Also, a very, very similar game to Double Dragon. But this is pretty much the game, just like uh, with Karate Champ, uh, making the one on one fighting phenomenon a big thing. We have Double Dragon making the uh, two player side scrolling combat game a phenomenon with this game. Very, very cool stuff here. Let's see if there's any uh, ticks, uh, tricks and tips here. This is a great uh, amount of information here. I'm loving this. I'm definitely going to have to come back and read all this stuff. There's a cartoon TV series produced by Deke Entertainment. Definitely, I remember that being a cool show. And uh, then we have the live action movie released in 1994. That was actually filmed locally in Cleveland, Ohio, where I live. And uh, one of my friends was actually in that movie. He brought over the VHS tape of the movie and said, Hey, look, I'm in this movie. And he shows himself being bashed into uh, a door uh, frame by one of the uh, brothers. Very, very funny stuff. But I'm going to disable the main menu here. And we're going to exit. And uh, we'll try out one more final game for this video. And then uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy your weekend and I'll get this out before Christmas. Let's see what our final game is going to be in this video. Let's pick one more game to do. How about Mario Brothers? Why not Mario Brothers? A fitting game to end on the mini classic. Cool, cool border. Definitely digging it. Let's 
do a little bit of a demonstration on how to take out the enemies. Another good uh, two-player mode to activate game. Ever notice it feels like you're on ice when you're running around in this game? And again, you have limited usage of the power blocks. And again, I'm not the best at this game. I should be able to make it past the first stage at least. I believe this is one of those games that if you don't beat the stage quick enough, some enemy comes out and then takes you out. Okay, first stage done. And again, I have very limited usage of my power block. So I'll try to take out these enemies without utilizing that power block yet. Oh, great! <laughs> Definitely a cool game for its time. And there's one of them enemies that comes out if you don't get the stage done quickly enough. We see this happen in games such as Robotron as well. And uh, surprisingly, even the arcade version of Contra has this. If you stay in one place too long, something comes out on screen to take you out. Yeah, one more game had Mario that also had coins like this. Oh, wow, the Eternals are getting a lot faster. The Koopa, should I say. Oh, great. But hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. And uh, this will be in the next update. And hopefully you enjoy these incredible borders. And I'm going to be following the feedback and uh, adjusting things accordingly from that point on. But have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. It looks like both of them have been toying around the Infinity Gauntlet. No wonder things were getting so crazy. You know what? I'm going to take this back right now. If you don't mind. And I'm going to give you your keyboard back. Here you go. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five for you, and uh, one, two, three, four, five for you. So have fun with the keyboards. Uh. And the moral of today's story is if your cat knows how to bump a keyboard, just let the cat do its thing. Here you go, dude.